Zyron's inspiration in motion. I'm Beth Kingston, and with me today is the fabulous Jessica Barnett, and today we're going to be making decorative birdhouses. Now, the great thing about this project is there are so many different wooden, alterable items available at craft stores. Birdhouses, picture frames, letters that you can put up in your kids' room. When you're starting on a project like this, can you walk me through how you make the template and how you start doing all the measurements? Yes. First, I just use my ruler to measure the simpler things, like the rectangles for the roof and the side. Okay. And then, to make the template, I started with a piece of paper mm -hmm. and kind of, it was a little hit or miss in the beginning. Uh -huh. And then once I got a good one, I put it on a chipboard so that I can use this over and over. Great, okay. And I marked on here also, because the front has the little post for the bird to stand on and the pole right. So if you're working with something that's not exactly flat or exactly square, that's how you get the measurements and get the dimensions. Yeah, and you can also, because the front and the back were the same size, you can start trying to measure that out, but you'll still need to mark right for where you're going to have to cut those. Things. Just do a little trimming or use a craft knife or something to get the edges. Yeah, I, with this one, once it was covered, I could feel where it was hollow. Mm -hmm. So I cut across and then just trimmed right around the side. And when we go back later with sandpaper, it'll clean it all up and it'll look perfect. That's perfect. Okay, so once you've got all the sides measured, you want to cut your different pattern paper. You've already done that for us. That's fantastic. And what we're going to do now is run it through our 5 inch creative station. We're using permanent adhesive. Mm -hmm. And the way you want to insert your paper is the pattern that you want facing up on your project is the pattern that you want facing up in the machine. So you're going to feed the paper into the feed tray and you'll feel it bump up against the roller. And then you're just going to turn the handle away from you. And you're just going to insert each piece of paper as you go. And this is going to make all of your pieces of paper into a sticker. So you have edge-to-edge -edge coverage. You don't have to worry about it peeling off. You don't have to worry about that goop that you sometimes get with liquid glue. So this is a great thing about these machines. And it's a very strong adhesive, so you don't worry about it That's peeling good. off. It's not like for good. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So once you've got it on a piece on your piece of paper, you just want to kind of burnish around the edges. Use your finger or use the tip of a pen to make sure that you've got all the sticky adhesive around on the edges. And you're just going to peel off this piece of plastic. This will come right off. And all of these pieces of paper are thicker. And then we're going to start putting those on. Yeah. Then the cellophane will pull off all that extra piece of adhesive that's right. around there. So The other thing I love about this project is you can match it to any decor in your home. You can match it to a theme. These would be darling for winter projects, Christmas ideas, um, Mother's Day gifts. Yes, there are some that are even shaped like lighthouses or cabins for the gift to someone. I love them. Housewarming. I mean, the possibilities are just never ending. You can stay here and be crafty all day. And this is also a great way to use your scraps, pieces of paper you have that aren't 12 by 12, but they're darling patterns that you don't want to get rid of or it's hard to part with. You can mix and match those together to make a darling project. Yes. Very easy to use, just as long as they coordinate. That's you right. Like and look key? Yep. You can do a different paper on every side. Okay. So now that we have everything on there, there's bound to be a little bit of overhang on something. So you're going to take some sandpaper and you'll want to sand along the edges of the entire project. And what it does is make it look like this was just made all to be together all in one piece. It'll take off the edge where there's any extra overhang of paper. And it looks cute, a little more distressed and weathered. Right. Not so much in this one to them. Now we get to my favorite part, which is embellishing. <laughs> We have these paper frills to make it look like a little Swiss kind. Oh, no, that's darling. And to measure it, I'm just going to start at the top, measure it down to the bottom of this. And because it's paper, you can make a little crease in there and then you know where to cut it, right? So you don't have to cut it right on there. And I've already done some of these. Okay. And also what I did at the top here was make a cut straight down on both of them so they'll meet at a point and not couple the roof of right left. And to adhere those, I'm going to use the 
creates a charter. Okay. Which is nice because it gives you that overhang without sticking this on the back. Yeah. You don't have to worry about it picking up dust from this side or anything. To put the flowers and the stems on the front, mm -hmm. I took a piece of cardstock and cut off a quarter inch wide strip Great. like this. Another good use of scrap? Yes. And I then cut it into different lengths okay. to make the stems. And to do those, we're just going to run them through the 150. And you can put multiple pieces in there because they're thin. Yeah. It takes up to an inch and a half, so these are only quarter inch thick. So pull that out, take it off, and then burnish with good rub. Go back to the garbage. And then we're going to place these just wherever you would like them okay. on the front of the birdhouse. And then once you've placed all these on here, you want to choose some flowers, okay. paper or silk, and put those on. You can either run them through your 150 mm -hmm. or use your adhesive runner to just apply some dots on the back. So when I'm working on 3D projects, I like to use the adhesive runner because it still allows the edges of the flower petals to stick up, but if you're doing a flat, maybe layout page that you want everything to lay perfectly flat, okay. it's great to run it through here because again, you get that edge to yeah. edge. Because I just put that little bit on the center. Right. And you'll do all three flowers on for each stem. And then you'll need some buttons for the centers. I'm going to pick a little bit wider one. This is the coolest part? Okay. And 150. the 150 will take anything up to the thickness of a nickel. So I'm just going to drop the button in there and pull it through just like I did with the stems. And burnish. And like that, and I have a button sticker. Just place it right in the center of the flower. And that's especially nice when you're working with something where the button is upright because you don't have to worry about the glue not adhering and it falling yeah. off later on. That is on for good. Yeah. Nothing to wait for drying or anything. Right. And it has adhesive all the way along the back. And then you just take some green um, mm -hmm. paper frills and go around the edge and that makes the darling grass mm -hmm. kind just of like effect. the same fold at each corner to mark it mm -hmm. for measuring and just trim it off at the end. And the same thing, you'll use the runner roll along all the way around the bottom and stick that on. Well, I absolutely love this. It's perfect for gifts, perfect for any room in the house. Thank you yet again for another fantastic project. Thanks for joining us at Zyron's Inspiration in Motion. We'll see you next time.